Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing um, my discussions on the Amazon rainforest and the burning in the Amazon rainforest. And as I said in the introduction of my previous video, to the best of my knowledge, the amount of oxygen that the Amazon rainforest produces is about, it's about 16% of the um, uh, world's rainforest. Okay, uh, sorry, it's about, it's about 16% of the terrestrial global photosynthesis. So that's photosynthesis from land. And if you look at the global total con consisting of land and ocean, it's about 9.5%. Okay, and that number has been um, misstated, um, not, you know, unintentionally in, in, uh, from many, many media sources. But I think those are the numbers that are accurate. So I'll continue on along the vein of where I left off in the previous video. So I'm showing Earth Null School, and I'm looking at the chemistry and at the carbon monoxide. You know, when there's combustion, an incomplete combustion, there's carbon monoxide release. So this is, this is uh, carbon, carbon monoxide as measured from satellite, and this is August 1st, and I'll just cycle through a day at a time. August 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. Seventh, eight. So you can see what's happening here. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth. Okay, so up to August sixteenth, NASA stated that the burning was, um, you know, in the range of previous years. And if we go on, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth. 20th. You can see the burning is picking up significantly most days. You know, there is variation from day to day. Okay, and then it finally got the world's attention and um, yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, even, even uh, you know, had statements at the recent uh, G7 meeting of, of world leaders. So let's look a bit more about the, some of the key things in the, the Amazon. So Great, if you look at Amazon rainforest, great information at Wikipedia, um, as usual. Okay, it's a moist broadleaf tropical rainforest in the Amazon biome. The basin covers about 7 million square kilometers, of which 5.5 million square kilometers is covered by the rainforest. Okay, nine nations in there. Most of the forest is in Brazil. 60% of the rainforest is in Brazil, 13% in Peru, Colombia 10, and the, the, the rest divided up into these other countries. Okay, the Amazon represents over half of the planet's remaining rainforest, or it's about half anyway. And it compromises the largest and most biodiverse tract of tropical rainforest in the world. 390 billion individual trees divided into 16,000 species. Okay, so remember that number, 390, 390 billion individual trees. And you can go on about some of the, the details. Now, how long has the rainforest been there? It's been there for, the rainforest has been in existence for at least 55 million years. Okay, it likely formed during the Eocene era, which the Eocene is from 56 million years to 33.9 million years, so 55 million years at the beginning of the Eocene. We think that the rainforest was, has existed since then. Most of the region remained free of savanna type biomes. So savanna is really, um, you know, you can click on any of these to no internet. <laughs> Come on, you're kidding me. Sure, I have internet, but anyway, um, yeah, savanna is basically grasslands with trees, and then you go from savanna. If you have less rainfall, you go to completely to grasslands. Um, rainforest, there's, there's obviously uh, large amounts of rainfall, but the rain is recycled efficiently. So it falls on one area of the rainforest and works its way through the rainforest with one water molecule maybe coming down multiple times, even eight or nine times from what I've read. 
Okay, um, so you know the rainforest that used to extend as far as 45 degrees latitude, there's been fluctuations and so on. Um, okay, but it's been there a long time. So are we going to let this, are we going to, you know, are we humans going to going to destroy this rainforest? You know, it's under stresses from climate change, significant stresses from climate um, causing, you know, droughts and things. But humans uh, to continue to destroy vast regions of the rainforest and have the whole thing collapse. You know, this, we're, this is completely opposite to what we're trying to do to stabilize climate. Right? How can we possibly succeed in slashing fossil fuel emissions to, to you know, lower CO2 levels in the atmosphere and oceans you know, if we destroy one of the world's biggest, large, biggest carbon sinks? Now, one of the things that's very important and interesting is the Sahara Desert dust wind blown to the Amazon. A lot of the soils in the Amazon rainforest are very, very poor, lacking in nutrients. In fact, when you destroy, if you slash down all of the trees and then you burn them, the, the ash is fertilizer for a while, but often you can only grow soy for a few years and then they're used for cattle grazing and then they're abandoned um, and the, you know, the farmers and foresters will move on to the next region. So, you know, it, it's really a, only short-term economic gain for, for them um, to follow these techniques. Meanwhile, it's an enormous risk to the entire world's climate system. But, you know, more than 50, so it relies on dust that is blown from the Sahara for a lot of these nutrients. More than 55% of the dust fertilizing the Amazon rainforest comes from uh, a depression, the Bodoli Depression on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert in northern Chad. Okay, this dust contains phosphorus, which is important for plant growth. It's a nutrient. So the yearly Sahara dust replaces the equivalent amount of phosphorus washed away yearly in Amazon soil from rains and floods. Okay, so there's a NASA satellite, the Calypso satellite, that measures the amount of dust transported by wind from the Sahara to the Amazon. On average, there's 182 million tons of dust wind blown out of the Sahara each year. Okay, at 15 degrees west longitude, it crosses 1,600 miles um, to 2,600 kilometers of Atlantic Ocean. Some dust falls out into the Atlantic, fertilizing, you know, those nutrients and fertilize the surface of the ocean allowing phytoplankton growth at 35 degrees west longitude it hits the eastern coast of south america about 15 percent of the dust falls on the amazon basin a lot of the dust remains in the air um, and a lot of it then continues on and falls in the caribbean sea past 75 degrees west longitude so a lot of the nutrients that allow the amazon to grow so well are from the Sahara Desert. So, of course, if there's changes, you know, if the Sahara Desert is, um, the, the wind patterns change, if the amount of dust produced in the Sahara, small dust changes, um, then that can also affect the growth of the Amazon rainforest. Okay, the variation from year to year can be high in the amount of dust produced. The highest amount of dust was transported in 2007, according to the satellite data the lowest in 2011, and it was an 86% drop in the, in the dust. Okay, and the possibility could, for that variation could be the Sahel. When rains in the Sahel are higher, the volume of dust produced is lower. The higher rainfall makes more vegetation grow in the Sahel, leaving less sand exposed to winds to blow away. So you can see the connections and the balance. And, you know, lots of human activity um, over time, um, let's just have a look at a couple of these images. This is a uncontacted tribe in the Brazilian state of Acre in 2009. Um, geoglyphs on deforested land. So these are these are artifacts that were laid down years ago by um, native peoples. Um, lots of lots of images on the um, some of the animals and plants and so on that are, that are uh, 
that are in there in the forest. Okay, so you can go and have a look at the rest of the details on the animals and stuff. And basically, there has been ongoing deforestation to various levels. And I'll talk about some of the numbers on that. Um, so you can have a look at that. Now, basically, on the droughts. So there's been a number of droughts occurring in the Amazon. Okay, and this is very concerning. It's a rainforest. In 2005, parts of the basin experienced the worst drought in 100 years. 2006 was, uh, you know, may have been a second successive year of drought. Okay, um, a report, an article reported a Woods Hole Research Center result showing that the forest in its present form could survive only three years of drought. Okay, um, so it's being pushed to a tipping point where it will irreversibly start to die. The forest is on the brink of being turned into savanna or desert with catastrophic consequences for the world's climate. Okay, in 2010, there was another severe drought, more extreme than the 2005 drought. Okay, the region was about 3,000 square kilometers of rainforest compared with 1.9 million square kilometers in 2005. So the drought covered a larger area in, in 2010. Um, and this was published up in Science. Um, okay, and there were additional droughts. So severe droughts have occurred in 2010, 2015, and 2016 as well, and as well as the 2005. Okay, so I'll talk about water recycling um, in the Amazon uh, in a bit too. Um, but if you go to, uh, if you look at the, there's a link to the actual fires this year, 2019 fires, here you go. You can click that link and we come across this site. So this is all about what's been happening for this year. These in thousands of independent wildfires, okay, occurring in, the, in the 2019 during the tropical dry season. You know, where they are, the areas that they're covering, that they're covering um, and and so on okay and it talks about the slash and burn techniques that um, are used so it's not actually the rainforest in its pristine form that is burning in the most case in most cases because there's a lot of moisture in these forests what's happening is that the trees are being pulled down or or uh, chainsawed down uh, pulled down with uh, heavy tractors and chains or chainsawed down and then left to dry out and then later on uh, burned, whether the wood stacked or whether it's just burned where it falls. I, I'm not sure, but it's basically burned that way when it's a bit drier. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of information here on the politics and, and so on. Um, and the, Brazil's approach to um, these wildfires in the past and and at present and this is a you know this is a table showing number of wildfires detected um, in all of the different regions through the different years and you can see the percentage increase in um, this particular year media coverage indigenous peoples biodiversity all of that stuff I mean there's all kinds of articles on you know what's happening right now Okay, um, this is a very good uh, article by Manga Bay on Amazon destruction, and, and you can see some of the stats that are occurring. So this is aggregate, this is tree cover loss, basically aggregate annual tree cover loss in the Amazon 2001 to 2017. I believe it's in hectares, and you can see, you know, the total the amount in Brazil is blue, the amount in the other countries are here, and you can see the so large numbers in 2004, 2005, you know, large, very large numbers in 2016, 2017, you know, so, so uh, you can see it doesn't have 2018 and 2019 on here yet, but you can see how the trends are developing. And I'll continue in another video. Thanks for listening.